اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم بسم الله النور بسم الله نور النور بسم الله خالق النور بسم الله نور على نور بسم الله الذي انزل النور على الطور في قلب رسول محبور والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا محمد و آله الطاهرین نور الله فی اراضین سلوات و عجل فرج هم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام علیکم جمیعا و رحمت الله و برکاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا و ما کننا لنهتدی لولا ان هدان الله We are approaching the holy nights of the month, uh, months of Ramadan, especially the nights of Qadr. And inshallah from tonight onward until we go through the nights of Qadr, inshallah, and by the grace of God, we meet the night of Qadr, inshallah, this year each and every one of us. And the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the blessing and mercy that they send to earth, inshallah, will be included among the recipients of the divine mercy. Uh, the topic, inshallah, from tonight will be in preparation for Laylatul Qad, the prerequisites that we need to, inshallah, prepare ourselves spiritually. As for tonight, the topic is in quest of the nur of the month of Ramadan. There is a dua that when Imam Ali, alayhi salam, uh, you, Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad, You know, it's mustahab to go moon sighting, especially for the months of Ramadan, and more especially for some reasons or for some obvious reasons, people are very much interested to go for the sighting of the moon on the months of Shawwal, to make sure that no more fasting. By the way, when Amir al-Mu'minin, Imam Ali alayhi salam, used to look at the beautiful crescent moon of the months of Ramadan, he used to recite a dua. Part of the dua is this. اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد اللهم مرزقني Do you wish to repeat? اللهم مرزقني خير هذا الشهر و نوره Very simple اللهم مرزقني خير هذا الشهر و نوره O Allah grant me the goodness of this month and the nur of this month This part of it, then the Imam when he says, and we are talking about the words of a Ma'asum, when Imam says that the goodness in this month and the nur in this month inspired me to do a bit of research to find out why is it that the Imam has, made, has asked for two things, the goodness of the month and the nur of this month, number one. And number two, what is the nur in the month of Ramadan? So the topic, inshallah, tonight, presenting my uh, humble research, is in quest of the nur of the month of Ramadan. To start with, please remember this fact. Anything of any of my humble talks that you may forget, please, this part of it, make sure that you register it respectfully in your mind, and you keep it handy, like my final will, I always keep it on my desktop, handy. So anything happens to me, my, my family, they can easily find my will. All my estates, all my properties, all around the world, they can easily divide and, <laughs> and share. I'm joking, of course. Uh, this, this information, please keep it very handy, that time and again you check it and see whether uh, you remember it. And that is, brothers and sisters, we are all travelers, we are all wayfarers. Undoubtedly. Not only we are on the spaceship of the Earth that have, is having about eight motions, they say. This is the motion of the time. We are also on the train of time, obviously. One of the pre-Socratic uh, philosophers, his name is Heraclius, 
he has a very good statement. He says that you can never cross a river twice. Because first time that you cross it, second time you want to cross it, even a minute later, it will be a different water, and hence different river, number one. You are also going to be a different person. Today we know scientifically that constantly the cells of your body are dying and new cells are, re are replacing them. So constantly, physically, I'm changing. And because I'm on the train of time, there is no pause to say that I repeat this scene. We assume that, okay, cut, repeat. But there's no, in, in real, in philosophical sense of it, there is no such repetition ever possible to happen. Therefore, you and I will only get an opportunity once and for all in our life. Make it or break it, good or evil. Always keep this in mind. And really, if we are always conscious of this notion, think of it, of how stingy you and I should become about our time. Because every time is a unique opportunity. Today that the sun of today set will never come back again. Impossible. And every day is like this. Every minute, every hour is like this. I think we, we agree on this. Any, any dispute about this fact? So we are all wafers traveling on the train of time going forward. Where am I going and what am I doing here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I started my talk with this khutbah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nur. In surah nur, ayat nur, we have this ayah, Allah nur as samawati wal ard. In dua kumail tomorrow night, inshallah, we recite, you remember, ya nuru. Ya Qudus. So indisputably God is a Noor. Noor is one of the divine attributes of God as our destination. So when God says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, we all belong to God and to whom we are returning, you can say that we are all returning to the source and the creator of Noor. Keep all this information. I'm going to put pieces of puzzles inshallah together. I told you the topic, inshallah, for tonight is something that we cannot afford missing it really ever in our life. We should always be conscious about this. Imam Rida alayhi salam was asked who and what was the very first creation of God before the creation of matter, before the creation of earth and the heavens and all these galaxies. The Imam says, Awwalu ma khalaq Allah an nur because God is Noor, the very first creation of God, and in Islamic philosophy, Mullah Sadra elaborately has proven this, that there must be a compatibility between the creator and the creation. The first creation of God must be the most perfect one, because God is the most perfect. And that's why we say Ahlul Bayt are the very first creation of God, Noor of Ahlul Bayt, not their physical body. That was given birth by, for example, Amen, the mother of uh, the Holy Prophet of Islam. We are not talking, I told you, it's way beyond the world of matter. So the Imam says that the first that God has created is again Noor. You are familiar with the translation of Noor, I don't need to say light. Let's continue, carry on. So this is the first. The destination that God has promised, inshallah, believers, mu'mineen, we all die in, in, in faith is paradise. The Rawayat says that God has created paradise from the Noor of his watch. From the noor of his face, we'll come to know what is this. Paradise was created. In this world, and like, let me give you this example. To a, a bit of comparison, if at all we can comprehend and compare this world with the hereafter. In dunya, we are in the world of darkness. Physically, I'm not talking about this is physics. All these lights are turned off, we cannot see each other, we are in dark. I am dark, you are dark, the objects around us are all dark. In Paris, so we need artificial lights to illuminate the, the, the place and each other. In paradise, paradise is light. It's, if you like me to say, it's luminous itself, it's bright, it's shining. Every tree in paradise is illuminous, is shining. Every river in paradise is shiny. Every pe person in paradise is shiny. So if you want to make it to paradise, paradise is the place of all those who are shining. It's just like the light, as an example, forgive me for, uh, this is of course metaphorically. These artificial lights, they don't need the light to see them. They are bright themselves.
Whereas this piece of wood, you need light to see it. It doesn't have light itself. Am I making any sense? In paradise, to see all the heavenly creation of God, Hurul in rivers, gardens, trees, you name them, including people of paradise, you don't need any light to see them. They are all luminous. They are all nurani. And that nur, I tell you, comes from this world, should be obtained from, from, from this world. That's why the Prophet uh, says that uh, paradise was created from the nur of God. Of course, they are all come from the nur of God, but then they are luminous themselves. One of the very famous Sunni Mufassirin in interpretation of the ayah in Surah Al-Dahr or Surah Al-Insan, A'udhu Billahi min shaytan al-Rajim, La yarawna fiha shamsan wa la zamharira. That in paradise, people of paradise, they don't need an external light, nur of, of sun. As I told you, because there is no need for it. He narrates this hadith that often people of paradise are sitting at different levels of paradise. And all of a the sudden they see that the entire paradise is shining, is glittering. They wonder, Ya Rab, what was that? What was that spark of light? The Almighty God says that Ali ibn Abi Talib, my male slave, and Fatima al-Zahra, my female slave, alayhi salamullah alayhima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The real compatible husband and wife couple, in both in dunya and akhira, they were talking in their paradise, in their palace in paradise, smiling, laughing, talking to each other, husband and wife, and the teeth, the holy teeth of Fatima al Zahra and Amir al-Mu'minin was shown, they were smiling. And the shining of the tip of the teeth, the front teeth of Fatima al Zahra, Imam Ali, illuminated the entire paradise. This is the level of the nur that man can, can create. So the destination paradise is the place of nur, the Almighty God, creator of the nur. What the business, what kind of business I have in this dunya, as I said, on the train of time, as I'm going and I'm losing opportunities, I'm getting closer to my destination, I should remember every second of my life, I'm either gaining nur or I'm gaining nar. Either I'm gaining light to be among people of dwellers of paradise, or I'm gaining nar or fire to be among dwellers of hell. There is no such neutral situation to say that no nur, no nar, no hell, no heaven. I'm neutral, I'm asleep. Because even when you are sleeping as a mu'min, that's why the Holy Prophet notes of the hadith of the Prophet. says, in the months of Ramadan, وَنَوْمُكُمْ tasbih. After Fajr time, you go to bed, you sleep, you are asleep, but breathing is counted for your glorification of God. A sleeping of a believer because he or she is resting to re rejuvenate their body, to have, like, be able to worship God more, it's counted as worshiping. You are sitting around the table close to have Sahari, it's counted for you worshiping because you are eating to have energy to be able to fast. You know, so there is no neutral situation. Constantly be conscious of this. Constantly I'm either gaining nur for myself or nar or fire of hell for myself. Be careful what you are taking in. Not, of course, physically. I'm not talking about physical things. Continue with me. It is now for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us when you are in this world, it, your faith matters. Your action matters because every action or faith that you believe in is either the reality of it is either nur, a material of paradise, or nar, the material of fire of hell. Let me go through some examples for you. One of the prime examples is the salat. Inshallah, we'll speak about it in due course. A, an element of salat that Imam Sadiq says there are four sections in the salat that you cannot afford miss or be negligent about it. One of them is when you are in the state of ruku'ah. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, مَا يَرْكَعُ عَبْدٌ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى رُكُوعًا عَلَى الْحَقِيقَةِ إِلَّا زَيَّنَهُ اللَّهُ بِنُورِ وَجْهِ بِنُورِ مِنْ نُورِ بَهَائِهِ Allah Akbar. No one would truly, sincerely bow before God, 
and does the ruku for the sake of God, unless while he or she is in the state of ruku, the transmission of nur from the glory of God is coming to him. You are becoming more luminous, more bright internally. I'm not talking about the body, although I'll tell you that it has reflection on the body as well. And who, and Imam Rada says, only if people who are praying, they knew what they are gaining in the position of the ruku, they wouldn't go terrible when they pray. Why are you in a rush? Wait, let transmission is downloading. Grab the more, more you can, the better. This is the salat part of it. I told you that, inshallah, in due course, we'll speak uh, uh, in a separate session on that. Again, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Sabab al-Nur fil qiyama as salat fi jof al-layl. In the darkness of your bedroom at night, nobody is around. It's only you and God and the furniture around you. Nobody knows. Nobody is supposed to know. Lights off and you are doing your namaz shab your salat al-layl. You are creating nur for yourself. This nur is going, I'll tell you, is going to benefit you in the hereafter. The very first marja that in my life I had the honor of seeing face to face when first I went to Rome to study, I was the teenager back then, was Rahmatullah Alai A'lallah Maghama Ayatullah Gulpaigani. Some of the elderly may remember his name. Allahu Akbar, brothers, yani, as if uh, I, I saw noor, noor on his face, mashallah, was illuminating. That's why. And the Rawayat confirms that the internal nur, that nur is feeding your soul, not your body. But still it has reflection on your body as well. Especially on the face, it has reflection on the face. Some of the mu'minin, you can tell, mashallah, nur, simahum fi wujuhim min athar sujood, as Quran said. You can see the nur of the sajda on their faces. The nur of the worshipping God on their faces. When you go to hajj, Hajj also is accumulating so much nur, inshallah, for your akhirah. Part of it for brothers when we are shaving, that is mustahab, very strongly is recommended, if not some marajah say wajib, those who are doing it for the first time to shave. Even second time, always better to shave. Because the rawayat says, لِكُلِّ شَعْرَةٍ نُورٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةٍ Every hair that you are shaving turns to nur for you for your akhirah. Males or females, when they return from Hajj, alayhim nurul Hajj. So Hajj has a nur that you bring it back home with you. Do you see? The other side of it, let me touch as well. Any time that I sin, any time that I hurt, any time that I'm being unfair to anyone, we spoke last night and a few nights before also about the social, you know, the negative relation or things like that, I am also bringing dhulma, I'm bringing darkness to myself. So I'm always in this struggle of gaining, losing, gain, or gaining nur or gaining darkness. Be careful. Any time that the darkness through sins, variety of sins, that's the hadith. Al-Zulm, Zulmatun, Yom Al-Qiyamah. Zulm means uh, oppression. Zulm means being un unfair to others. When I'm unfair to others, when I'm treating them unfairly, I'm bringing darkness to my soul. My soul becomes dark and dark and on the top of darkness. Zulmatun, Ba'aduha, Fawqa, Ba'adin. Quran says darkness on the top of darkness. In fact, Quran says Zulmat in a plural form. In English, I don't know if we can use, uh, say, darknesses. Because darkness is a state of being. It's just like happiness. You don't say happinesses. But yes, we can say different types of darkness. The darkness of lying, the darkness of gossiping, the darkness of, uh, I don't know, uh, haram business, you name it. Dhulumatun. And my soul becomes dark and dark and dark. What does the repentance does to prepare me for the nights of God? Is that once I repent, repentance brings nur to overcast the darkness of the soul. And I said, Rabbana atmim lana nurana wa ghafir lana. That's the of the Quran. Oh Allah, complete my nur. I've lost some of my nur because of my sins. Wa atmim lana nurana wa ghafir. And now forgive me. So if darkness is replaced with nur, you are forgiven. And often you feel it. Inshallah, in the nights of God, you feel it. 
That lightness that you feel inside yourself is an indication that inshallah you are forgiven. If your heart was broken during the dua, like a drop of tear is an indication that the connection is on. Inshallah we are, we are forgiven. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. No matter what, tonight I'm going to stick to the time, I promise you. I felt so bad last night after I left, really. I'm checking the time, inshallah. And if I pass, somebody please just interrupt me. So, all different worshipping acts have this benefit, and that's why Imam Ali salam says, Allahum marzuqni khayra hadha shahr wa noorah. Ramadan, there's goodness in it, and there's noor in it. But the puzzle still is there. It's not solved. This is a, a very special information I want to share with you. And that is, all the good deeds that we do, as well as all the bad deeds, God forbid, belief and actions, there is, a, if you like to call it, a materialized version of them, and there is a spiritual version of them. All the beliefs in paradise, you name them, Hurul In, rivers, gardens of trees, and guard, uh, rivers of honey, and all the rest. There is a materialized, personalized version of them, and there is like, uh, the example is like this. Let me make it simple and easy, so that everybody can grasp it. You know, we say that I am the combination of body and soul. One entity, one reality, but the combination of... My body is the apparent side of me. That is uh, apparent. You can see the outer side. My soul is not visible, but is there. And it is my soul that is my essence. My body constantly changes, as we said. It. Cells die, new cells are born. But soul is the same. Go back to yourself and think about it. You remember that when you were 10 years old, you were the same person. You find yourself the same person, even at the age of 60. Still you see that you are the same, the same person, but physically changed. All the bliss in paradise, they also are like this as, a, as this example. So whatever that God is providing us in the hereafter, whether in hell, God forbid, or inshallah in paradise, the physical side of it, so to speak, so to speak, the apparent side of it is called Hurul In. It's called rivers of honey. It's called rivers of milk. It's called trees, bricks of paradise, the apparent side of it. The hidden side of it is called noor. Now you know what is the, this noor. And I prove this from the Quran, inshallah, by the grace of God. And that's why Imam Ali says, Allahumma marzuni khayra hadha shahr wa noorah. God, bless me with hurul in, with the gardens of river as well as the noor of Hurul In, as well as the noor of gardens of paradise. What is the noor of paradise? Follow me, inshallah. There is much more that we can learn, inshallah, from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, often when he is speaking, speaking about the rewards, deliberately and explicitly mentions that in the hereafter, there is a reward reserved for good people, as well as noor for them. وَالشُّهَدَاءُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ Lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum Martyrs or witness, those who are witnessing such as the Imams, holy people, pious people they are with Allah in the hereafter in terms of their status for them, for their benefit, for their pleasure ajruhum, their rewards wa nuruhum so reward is different from nur, kind of when two people walk in, I say that Ahmad and Hassan came. Unless there are two people, this, uh, grammatically, you don't need to say Ahmad. If Ahmad is one, this is Ahmad came, not Ahmad and Ahmad came. There must be Ahmad and a different person that say Ahmad and Hassan came. Here Quran says, Lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum. For them is the reward and their nur. So nur is a different thing than the Aj. Aj is the apparent side of your rewards, nor is the essence of your reward. Again, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa aminu billahi wa rasoolih 
ve aminu billahi ve rasule yu'tikum kifleyn min rahmeti ve nuren temşûne bih ve yec'al lekum nuren temşûne bih o you who believe try to gain this provision of taqwa in dunya and truly believe in Allah and the messenger of Allah what happens then God will reward you a double sided reward kifleyn min rahmeti from his mercy in dunya and in akhirah and then on the top of that and God also will illuminate you you will become bright you won't be dark anymore in your life in Barzakh you are desperately in need of that nur to make your way to paradise okay so is it clear so far that what is our business in this dunya? We have come from the source of Noor. We are going to the place of Noor, i.e. paradise. The capital that we need to learn, earn in this dunya, the more the merrier, is Noor. Therefore be greedy to look for Noor wherever you find it. The month of Ramadan is so rich with that Noor. Especially the nights of Ghadda that I come to that, by the way. Now, now I expired from this dunya. Let us see what happens in Barzakh, in my life in Barzakh. Again, be conscious of this. Like diaries, for every year I have a diary. Things that I write, my appointments, classes, and everything. Now, as an example, again, Quran says that your diary, again, you will, it will be unfolded after you die. Year 15 for the boys, year 16, year 17 onward, from the age of puberty onward will be opened read your book let's see in today's date how much nur did you gain you gain nur you'll, you'll enjoy it as Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh my teacher was saying that everyone will be the chef the cook and you cook for you cooked already for yourself and the food that you cooked for yourself prepared for yourself they put it on your own table cloth and they said enjoy it or suffer from it whatever in khair and fakhair or in shar and fashar Good, good on you. Bad, tough on you. Simple as this. Quran narrates the story. We go to Surah Al-Hadid. Allahu Akbar. Please follow me. This is the scene that we are so much indebted to Quran to have this incredible information with us that no scientist can ever discover. Quran narrates, uh, quotes the future after the life of dunya. A'udhu billah minash shaitan al-rajim. يوم ترى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يسعى نورهم بين أيديهم وعن يسعى نورهم بين أيديهم وعن أيمانهم بشراكم اليوم جنات. A day will come after you die in Barzakh. Believing men and believing women, deliberately, Quran also, of course, is all men and women, but deliberately for the sake of dummies, Quran is explicit here, male and females, believing men and believing women. You see that, يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ In front of them and on their right side. What is the right side? Mufassirin, they say, because your book of action, once is given to your right side, it's a gesture, indication of, lucky you, you made it. So your diary, if it's on the right, coming on the right side, that is Noor. Ahead of you, Noor, that you have made. Uh, we'll see how Quran explains it. The Noor that you have gained, the Noor of Ruku, the Noor of Hajj, the Noor of Fasting, the Noor of all different worship acts that you gained for yourself. The Rewayat is so rich in that. As Sakha'u Noor, generosity is Noor. Sadq, Noor, all of these, the real, the essence of them, the soul, the spirit of them is Noor, that we are constantly, inshallah, gaining. Then after I die, after you die, inshallah, we all, it includes all of us, Yas'a Nooruhum Bayna Aydihim, and it's, yes, oh, it's like going very fast, struggling, faster than the speed of light, inshallah, take you to paradise. And Quran says, Bushra kumulyom. What a glad tidings. What a good news is for you today. How happy you are. And you appreciate it when you look around. What is around me? Quran the next ayah explains. Yawma yaqulu al-munafiqoon wal munafiqat. Lilladhina amanun duruna naqtabis min nurikum. 
قيل ارجعوا وراءكم فالتمسوا نورا يا الله يا الله بحق محمد وعلى محمد We don't die as hypocrites We don't die as kuffar يا الله never this ayah that I want to translate inshallah includes me يا الله never with your mercy or answers on the other side of the story in Barzakh there are some hypocrites men and women in as much as they were believing men and women they are hypocrite, hypocrite men and women when Quran says brothers sisters are you with me when Quran says hypocrite men and women it means God is not talking about the kuffar out of the jama'ah out of the community Quran is talking about those who supposedly were known in this dunya as mu'mineen apparently Apparently his name was Muhammad, her name God forbid was Zainab or anything, Muslims. These are the hypocrites that they have the mask of Islam, apparently Muslim. But sincerity is lacking and therefore no salat. Someone's will was brought to me and his family, they say that our dad has written in his will, Right, uh, like uh, pay someone to do 45 years of praying and fasting for me. I said, 45 years? How old was your dad when he died? They said, 60. I said, so he never prayed? They said, no, Sheikh. He said, I was too busy. We migrated somewhere. I won't mention the name of the country, somewhere in the world. I was so busy working around the clock, didn't have time to pray. Allahu Akbar. What kind of lifestyle is this? Quran says that you, are, you can be called, and, and some people they think that my, with money I can buy salad, I can buy hajj, I can buy... That is in odd situations of emergency, out of mercy God allows that. Not for someone never prayed in his life, please. By the way, Quran says these hypocrites, they say to the believing men and women who know them, God forbid, they could be the husband and wife in this dunya, could be cousin, uncle, relatives in this dunya, but with different lifestyle. And therefore, because they know them, they go, they, uh, go out to them. Onudoruna, onudoruna has two meanings, at least that I understand. One meaning is that, look at me, how miserable I am. Do you see that I'm penniless? In dunya, without any money, you cannot do any business. You need capital. Imam Jawad says, in the hereafter, your capital is this nur. If you have taken it from dunya, you are the tycoon, you are the richest person in the hereafter. Otherwise, you will be the poorest of the poor. So, on Guruna, look how miserable I am. I don't have any nur, I'm in darkness. It's one meaning. The second meaning, on Guruna, yani wait for us. Why are you going so fast? Looking at his cousin, says, why are you going so fast? Please, hey, wait. Please take me with you. Well, what do you want? Naqtabis min nurikum. Wait, give me a grab of your nur. It's just like, give me a couple of dollars, a couple of shilling, please. Anything does better for... Naqtabis min nurikum. Grab a bit of your nur. Qila rja'u wara'akum faltamisu nura. Qila, yani, they don't deserve even to, to talk directly. It will reset to them. Go to hell. Tough luck. Erja'u wara'akum. Reverse. Reverse and get the nur from dunya. So dunya is the place of gaining nur. In quest of nur, we enter the month of Ramadan this year, inshallah. Ya Rab, don't me include us among those who exit the month of Ramadan empty-handed with no nur of the month of Ramadan. Huh? So before this ayah applies to you and I, God forbid, please, Talk to yourself every day of Ramadan, every day of your life, every night of your life. Irji'u wara'akum, Shaykh Lagai, Ya Mansur, you are dead. And before you ask, beg others for Noor, if you really want Noor, Noor is in dunya. Alhamdulillah, you have the opportunity. One of my children, he was saying that, that I so much love Dua Kumail, that I want when I die, people, they, they read Dua Kumail around my grave. I said, my son, you can do it yourself. He said, can I? I said, yes, while you are alive, read Dua Kumail now, and inshallah, I'll tell you tomorrow night. Dedicated to the soul of Mansur Lagai for himself. Don't wait for others to give it to you. 
Resize Surah Al-Fatiha dedicated to yourself. Why do I wait for others to, that they might, may or may not read it for me? You can well do it now. No matter what kind of recording device humans they have, still there's a possibility that is erased. The file is deleted, corrupted, virus, anything. But when God records, never goes to waste. So while you're alive, every Thursday evening, as much as you can, read the Akumel, sign quietly, dedicated to my first night, dedicated to my life in Barzakh. That is the nur that you are sending ahead of yourself. And any other good action, uh, uh, the same applies to them. Am I making any sense? With salawat Allah Muhammad wa Allah Muhammad. So Quran says that make sure you are not among those hypocrites that they say, please give us a grab of your nur because it will be said to you, return. And because there is no reverse, as I told you, even while in dunya there is no reverse, let alone after we left the life of dunya. So we have to be stingy about our time. We have to be very careful of, take advantage of any opportunity, collect nur. What am I doing? What is your business? I don't have any business in this dunya other than collection of nur. Now, still I have not answered the, or have not fully explained the hadith, the dua of Amirul Mu'minin. What is the nur of the month of Ramadan? Undoubtedly, fasting is nur and provides nur. Undoubtedly, the supplications of the Imam of Ahlul Bayt are nur. Inshallah, we'll speak about them. But I believe the nur that Amirul Mu'minin is talking about is something that I call it the guest of the month of Ramadan. The most honorable guest in the month of Ramadan, which was the Holy Quran. The month of Ramadan, as far as the month, the lunar calendar month is concerned, what's the difference between Ramadan and Shawwal or Shaaban? Huh? These are lunar calendar months, phases of moon, and we have given them different names. So they themselves, there is no nur, I don't see any particular, any nur in it. It is your fasting that illuminates. The months. It is your uh, dua that illuminates the months for you. Likewise, it is the revelation of the Quran in the months of Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan, Alladi Unzila Fihil Quran, that illuminated this month of Ramadan and made it remarkable and special. So the nur of Ramadan that Imam Ali is asking is also is asking about the Quran. And I tell you what. I tell you what, I cannot unfortunately finish it tonight. Please make sure that you turn up tomorrow night because uh, inevitably I, my uh, talk remains uh, uh, like incomplete tonight. But the, the, the beautiful part of it is not commercial. The whole is not commercial. This is reality, all right? But if you are interested to know how Ramadan is the nur of the month of Ramadan, uh, how Quran is the nur, inshallah, you need to come tomorrow night. For now, I just stop at this stage, up to here, inshallah, until we continue. All the revelation that God has sent to mankind through his messengers, they are nur or they contain nur. Here is the Quran, Surah Al-A'raf, about, for example, Torah. Inna anzalna Torah fiha hudan wa nur. God says we send down Torah, the book of Moses, in which there is nur, Guidance and Noor. Again, see, guidance and Noor. So Noor is different from guidance. I'll tell you why tomorrow night. About Injil again, Quran says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلِ yani We gave Injil to Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam. وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلِ فِيهِ هُدًا وَنُور We gave Jesus Injil, Gospel, in which there is guidance and Noor. Two different things. When it comes to Qur'an, Noor, grammatically the ayat that I read, it means partially they have Noor, not the full Noor. Because the teachings of the previous prophets were not also uh, complete. But when it comes to Qur'an, Qur'an says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا Noor and Mubin, yani complete Noor. 
illuminating, fully illuminating nur came down with the Quran. But how and still what it is in the Quran that Imam Ali alayhi salam is asking, what is the nur of the Quran? And how can I gain this nur of the Quran, inshallah, in the months of Ramadan? I owe you to share it with you, inshallah, tomorrow night with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Humbly, respectfully, if I may ask you to raise your hand and just short dua. It's not the length of the dua that always matters. It's the depth of the dua. Many people are oblivious about uh, dua sahar, known as dua sahar or dua al-baha. Please endeavor to read it, inshallah, from uh, this morning if you can, before you will lose. Short dua, maybe 15, 16 paragraphs, but so deep in the meaning. Part of it is this, that Imam Rida is teaching us. اللهم إني أسألك من نورك بأنوره وكل نورك نير اللهم إني أسألك من نورك كله صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد